All right, guys, so in the previous video, we went through the whole explanation as to how we built up this circuit. If you'd like to see that video before looking at the three wire in action, uh, I'll put the link uh, somewhere on the page. Maybe I'll put it right here. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Tweedo suite and we're going to build up this program on our Tweedo suite. So we'll do the open loop for the three wire. So let's bring up our Tweedo suite here. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to configure. And I've got my stop push button wired to my input zero. I've got my start push button wired to my input terminal number one. And those are the two inputs that I require. The outputs I have, I only have a single output. So if we scroll down here, then my output number nine is physically wired to my motor contactor. So I'm going to label Q09 as my motor contactor. Okay, then let's go to program. And we'll jump right into it. We're going to drop in a rung here. So on the Tweedo suite, it says add a section, but that's really just dropping in a rung. And I'm going to put in my um, examine if closed for my stop push button, my examine if closed for my start push button, my output, and I'm going to parallel in another examine if closed. So watch how I parallel onto my start push button. I'm going to press my left mouse button. I'm going to scroll over to the right hand side until I see green, let go. And now I've got a parallel connection there. Okay. Then I'm going to drop in another examine if closed. So examine if closed, examine if closed, examine if closed, and my output matching exactly with what we have here. Examine if closed, examine if closed, holding contact. And then we've got our motor contactor. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're going to label these guys. We've already done the configure there. So I'm going to do output uh, 0, 0.0 for my stop push button. You can see how this comes in right away with the labeling. Uh, this one right here, not I need the address is input 0 0.1. That's my start push button. And then my output is percent Q 0.9 because I have it physically wired to that terminal. Okay, over here, I'm just going to look at that bit of information. And when it goes to a one, I'm going to examine it to one and provide another path of logic to go to my motor contactor. Now, if we want to uh, simulate this before actually hooking it up, uh, we can do that. Now, I find sometimes if I hit the save button, I have some issues. So you can hit save here. If you have an issue, you can always go back to project. Uh, save current project and I'm going to save it as the three wire here. I find it works fine like that. Sometimes that little save button uh, screws up on me. So I'm going to go back to the program. Double check that this works. Beautiful. That's good. I'm going to analyze the program, see if there's any issues. Okay. We can see here that there are no problems whatsoever. And I will go into my simulate now. Again, sometimes the simulation will kick out on you. You just have to try it again takes a little bit of time to come in. And again, right there for the simulation, it said it was impossible to start the, the simulation. I clicked simulation button again, and everything was perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to run this bad boy. Again, I don't have the PLC hooked up. Uh, it looks like we're running now. Just lost my input terminals here. Beautiful. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire on uh, my input zero to simulate that my stop push put push button is still pressed uh, and then I'm going to hit my start push button and as soon as I hit make this a one you'll find that the motor contactor on the right hand side turns on beautiful and when that motor contactor goes to a one then and you can see here that the output here number nine is <clears throat> is now on here so this input right here is also true as well. Now I can turn off my start push button, simulating that someone has let go or no longer pressing the start push button. And we can see that we have a path of logic here, keeping that motor contactor on until I physically press that stop push button and make it a zero. And when I do that, the motor contactor and the holding contact will both kick out. Ah, yes. Okay, let's, uh, let's look it up in the field, guys. 
Okay, again, so to go online, what we need to do is we need to go over here to debug. And I've got uh, my wire physically wired into the PLC from my USB. Uh, so I'm still not doing uh, Ethernet. I'm just going to stick with that patch cable for now. Um, and so I'm going to use COM8. I hit OK. It establishes the communication. It says there's a different PLC program on there. So I'm going to transfer from the PC to the controller. And I'll hit OK. And yeah, I'm going to overwrite the application there. It takes a bit of time for it to, uh, to go in. Excellent. Okay, so now we're ready to rock and roll. Now we need to hit the run button. And we're going to launch the controller. There we go. Now we're waiting for that green light, which just turned on. And we can see right now that um, the run, sorry, the run, the stop push button is, uh, we've asked to see that it's normally closed or that there is voltage to that terminal. And there is, I can hit that stop push button and press it and you can see that it's no longer true. I let it go, it goes back to its normally closed state. So this is open, this is closed. So it's ready to rock and roll. The next thing I need is for this to be true. So I need to actually press the start push button. So if I press this button right here, then it turns on and you may have heard that contactor turn on and I let it go and the contactor remains on because I have this as my holding contact. So there's a path of logic, not a path of current, but there's a path of logic. So this is true in that the stop push button, I'm looking for it to have voltage at the terminal, it does. This is looking to see that Q09 is on and we can clearly see that it is. And so it's sustained on until I make this untrue. So I've got to hit the stop push button and the contactor kicks out and the holding contact that corresponds to it pulls out as well. And just to show you what I mean by having the zeros and the ones, I'm going to go over here to manage animation tables. On the Allen Bradley, it has an IO table that, that provides you with all this information. I've had to physically put in my inputs and my outputs that I'd like to look at. And we can see here that my stop push button is currently a one, meaning that there is voltage from the positive through the stop push button to that input terminal. If I press that stop push button, then you can see that it goes to a zero. If I let it go, it goes back to a one. The start, once I hit this start push button, then it changes to a one. And you can see that my motor contact are now turned into a one as well. I'm now gonna let go of the start push button and it will go to a zero, but the motor contactor will be maintained at a one. Excellent. Okay, so you can see that as I press that start push button, then I'm using an examine if closed or an examine if there's voltage. Right now, there's no voltage to that input terminal. If I press that button, now there's voltage being applied to that input terminal and it changes the data table from a zero to a one. There's only two states for these guys. A zero is off or no voltage and a one is on or voltage applied. All right, let's go take a look at the PLC that I've got on the trainer here. Okay, so on the actual PLC, you'll notice that there's LEDs that show the status of the, the bits as well. Right now, my stop is hooked up to my input zero. So if I press that stop push button, watch what happens to that input zero right there. So that my inputs are on the, on the top and my outputs are on the bottom right now. There's no outputs on. Looks like the input zero is true right now. If I hit that stop push button, you can see that, that LED goes away, let it go, and it comes back. This is uh, number one, that's my start push button. When I press it, that green light will turn on, and you'll notice that my motor contactor turns on simultaneously as well. Okay, so let's take a look. We'll hit that start push button. There we go. So you can see that my start push button is now true, and my output number nine has now turned on. Number nine is my motor contactor. And as I let go of that push button, you'll see that this disappears. There you go. So the start has disappeared and my motor contactor is still maintained on. Excellent. Okay. Let's take a look at, uh, the motor contactor as I start and stop this PLC. 
Okay, so this is the contactor that I'm going to fire on right here. A uh, number of things to, to see that I've got my output, number nine, going to A1. So let me just zoom in here and you'll be able to see where I've actually wired that up. So A1 corresponds to the coil. And that terminal right there is connected up to terminal nine on my PLC. On the bottom there, there's my return to my neutral there. Then later on, I'm going to create a closed loop. So I'm going to make use of this normally open contact. So I've got the positive to one side of the normally open, and I've got the other side going back to an input on the PLC. And so right now my contactor has pulled in. You can see that this is pulled right in and it's energized. I'm going to hit the stop push button and it will pull out. There we go. So again, start. There we go. And stop. Beautiful. Now as it's running, I can now trip my overload. So below here, I have an overload. So I don't have a motor hooked up to this, uh, but the overload will still be able to be tripped. So I can trip the overload here and you'll see that the motor contactor turns off. But I don't have anything in my PLC program right now to tell us that we're in an overload state. So when it fires back on, I have no idea that what I was actually in an overload state. So this is the open loop in that we are not making use of this normally open contact yet. That's going to be in the next video. And my stop start station is uh, right here. I've got that connected into my PLC and that I have positive 24 volts coming from my PLC going up to both the stop and the start push buttons. And then individually from each of those push buttons, from the stop and the start, they both have return conductors going back into the inputs for the PLC. And we'll just zoom in to the PLC here. And you can see that right there I've got my 24 volts available right here. So I've got 24 volts DC. So the positive is going out to the field. And I have my normally closed stop push button going to input zero and I've got my normally open start push button going to input number one. Then I have a jumper. You may just be able to make out that I have a jumper between my common and my zero to complete that circuit. Okay, and just so you can see the whole setup here. So I've got my PLC running. I can see now that I have green on my stop and my motor contactor has kicked in. So I'm gonna hit stop and turn off this motor contactor. When I hit start, the motor contactor will turn back on. I can see that it's green on my PLC. I can see that that bit is a one. And so I'm just keeping track of the fact that that motor contactor is actually turned on in the PLC. I have nothing out in the field that tells me that this holding contact has actually pulled in yet. So I have no way of seeing that the contactor is actually pulled in yet. And I also have no way of seeing when it started, whether the overload has actually tripped. So it's a good base program so far, but we can build on this. The next thing we need to do in the next video would be to incorporate this normally open contact to make sure that the contactor has actually pulled in. Otherwise I'm just running blind. I'm just hoping that the PLC is correct, but it doesn't see anything out in the field. And I also need something to give me a signal that an overload has occurred and the motor contactor is turned, turned off. Because right now my motor contactor is off and on my PLC it says that it's still on. So this is an open loop in that I'm controlling my motor contactor, but I have no signals coming back from the motor contactor to tell me that it has actually pulled in with that normally open contact. And I have not made use of the overload contact either. So we're going to bring those in on the next video guys. So just so that we're clear on what I'm, uh, I'm talking about, I have my motor contactor pulled in right now, uh, but I'm not looking at that actual normally open contact that is part of that contactor. So I'm just physically looking at that Q09, which is this guy right here. I'm looking to see that Q09 is a one. If it is a one, then 
this will be true and I can keep that motor contactor on. So I'm just physically looking at a bit of information right here. And if this bit of information is what I need it to be, then it'll keep that motor contactor on. But I don't have a holding contact in actual fact sending a signal back to the PLC. Okay, now watch what happens when I create an overload. So I'm going to turn off my overload, simulating that I've now in an overload state, my motor contactor just kicked out. But look at this. It thinks that on the PLC that that motor is still running. But that contactor is off right now. So in the open loop, I'm able to turn the motor contactor on, but I can't see anything in the rear view mirror. I cannot see that the coil is actually smoking and on fire. And I can't see that the overload has just tripped. So it's a good base program to start with, but we need to throw in uh, some closed loop with the normally open holding contact and we'll throw in the overload as well. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Hopefully everything uh, made sense. If I missed anything or if I lost you somewhere, uh, then leave a comment below and I will sub in subsequent uh, videos, I'll make sure that I cover each of those topics. Thanks very much, guys.